So today we look at the radon nicodym theorem. So this is one of the important theorems in measure theory. Okay, so theorem radon nicodym. So x s mu finite measure space. Nu finite measure absolutely continuous with respect to mu. Then there exists f non-negative measurable function which is integrable with respect to mu such that for every e in s nu e equals integral over e f d mu. So you have two finite measures on a measurable space and then uh, one is uh, nu is absolutely continuous with respect to mu. Then the only way this nu can be constructed is via an inter non-negative integrable function, namely nu e equals integral a over e f d mu. And the function u, a function f, is unique in the sense. that if g is another such function then f equals g almost everywhere with respect to mu. Okay, so there is essentially only one function because you are integrating with respect to mu. Any other function which has the same property should be equal almost everywhere. Then the integrals will be the same uh, for every set E. Okay, so let us uh, prove this theorem. So proof. We later generalize this to sign measures. So starting with, we are starting with finite measures. Okay, so uniqueness. So <coughs> step one uniqueness. So let nu e equals integral f d mu over e equals integral over e g d mu okay f g non-negative and integral. Then for every n in n let you let us take e n equal to set of all x in x such that fx minus gx is bigger than 1 by n. Then 0 equals integral over e n f minus g d mu Okay, and fx minus gx is bigger than, so this will get than 1 by n mu of e n and therefore this has that mu of e n equal to 0. And now, so this then implies that set of all x in x such that fx minus gx is greater than 0, which is a countable union of the e n's which is equal to mu of union e n n equals 1 to infinity and therefore that is equal to 0. Similarly, mu of set of all x in x so set fx minus dx is less than 0, this also equal to 0. So this means uh, set of all mu of 
set of all x in x so set fx not equal to gx that's equal to 0 that is f equals g almost everywhere with respect to mu okay so we have dispensed with the uniqueness so now we want to find this function so the first idea is to find a candidate okay so so we start step 2 so l mu equals set of all f f measurable and integrable with respect to me okay and then you define k equals set of all f in l mu that is integrable functions such that f is non-negative and nu e integral over e f d mu is less than or equal to nu e for every e in s. So we are going to take the set k and we will try to find a maximal element in this k and then we will show that the maximal element actually satisfies that integral f d mu equals nu e for every e in s and then that will be the that's the idea of the proof okay so first of all k is non empty so uh, why is that non empty to see this so there exists an epsilon positive and a uh, such that mu a is positive and a is a positive set for nu minus epsilon mu this was a, one of the last propositions which we proved because everything is now finite and therefore this theorem can be applied so mu nu are all finite and therefore we can apply that result and therefore now you put f equals epsilon chi of a So then f belongs to L mu and then it is also non-negative. It is integrable because measure of a is finite and therefore it is integrable. Now integral over e of f d mu equals epsilon times mu of e intersection a and that is less than or equal to nu of e intersection a because a is a positive set for nu minus epsilon nu and that of course is less than or equal to nu e. Therefore, this implies that f belongs to k. So, k is non-empty and you have this. So, now integral over x f d mu equals epsilon times mu a which of course is strictly positive. So now you set alpha equals soup over all k of integral x f d mu. So f in k integral of this. So then 0 is strictly less than alpha because you have an element here which has strictly positive integral over x and of course that is less than or equal to since f is in k this is less than or equal to nu of x and that of course is finite. So step 3 see alpha is strictly positive therefore there exists g n in k such that integral over x g n d mu is uh, greater than alpha minus 1 by n because by alpha is the supremum and therefore you have this. So set f equals max f1 g, sorry g1 to g n f n. So again this is greater than equal to 0 and claim fn also belongs to k. 
So we want to show this. Okay, so E and I equal set of all x in x so set f n x equal to g i x 1 less than equal to i uh, less than equal to n then capital x is equal to union uh, i equals 1 to n e n i because e f n must be equal to some g i it's only a maximum so it is equal to some g i for every x uh, f n x is equal to g i x for some x i and therefore x is equal to this so now you set f n 1 equals e n 1 and f n i equal to e n i minus union j equals 1 to i minus 1 e n j then for 1 less than equal to i less than equal to n f n i are disjoint f n i is contained in e n i and x equals union i equals 1 to n e n i equals union i equals 1 to n f n i is the usual way we write a union as a disjoint union so if e belongs to s so let us take integral over e f n d mu this is equal to sigma i equals 1 to n integral e intersection f n i uh, f n d mu but that's equal to sigma i equals 1 to n integral e intersection f n i on f n i f n i is contained in e n i remember and on e n i f n and g i are the same so this is g i d mu okay so this is less than or equal to sigma i equals 1 to n mu of e intersection f n i and that is equal to mu e. And again so this implies that f n belongs to k. So step 4. So f n is a non-negative and increasing sequence because you are taking maximum over g g1 to gn so as you increase n fn will you are taking maximum over bigger and bigger things and therefore it is increasing sequence so let f equals limit n tending to infinity you have monotonic sequence fn okay then by the monotone convergence theorem you have that integral over e f d mu equals limit n tending to infinity integral over e f n d mu and that is less than or equal to nu e and this is true for every e in s and therefore you have that f also belongs to k. So this implies that integral over x f d mu is which is supremum over all uh, elements so this is less than or equal to alpha on the other hand you have integral over x f d mu is greater than or equal to integral over x f n d mu and that is greater than f n is the maximum of g1 to g n so in particular it is bigger than g n so g n d mu and that is bigger than alpha minus 1 by n and this is true for all n and therefore you have that integral of x f d mu equals alpha and f is in k okay so we have found a maximal element so we have a form uh, so step 5 So define 
nu1 of e equals the integral over e f dv e in s. So f integrable implies nu f is also non-negative okay nu is a nu1 is a measure and nu1 is absolutely continuous with respect to mu. So set nu naught equals nu minus nu1. So this is a sign measure both nu nu1 are finite. So the difference is well defined and therefore it is uh, a measure. Uh, sign measure. So, f belongs to k. So, this implies that nu1 of e which is equal to integral over e f d mu that is less than equal to nu of e. Okay. Therefore, nu0 is non-negative. So, it is a measure. So, nu0 is a measure and clearly nu naught is also absolutely continuous with respect to mu because both nu and nu1 are absolutely continuous with respect to mu. So once again step 6 again nu naught mu finite measures implies there exists an eta greater than 0 and f such that mu f is positive and f is a positive set for nu naught minus eta mu. Okay, so now For every e in s, you have eta of mu e intersection f is less than or equal to nu naught of e intersection f, which is equal to what is nu naught? Nu naught is equal to nu minus nu1 okay so that is equal to nu of e intersection f minus nu1 of e intersection f which is equal to nu of e intersection f minus integral e intersection f of f d mu set h equals f plus eta times chi f. So, if e belongs to s, then you have integral over e. So, this is non-negative of course. h d mu, which is equal to integral over e f d mu plus eta times mu of e intersection f. Now eta mu in e intersection f we know we have estimated it so that is less than or equal to integral over e f d mu plus nu of e intersection f minus integral e intersection f f d mu. So you have this term here and you have this term here so that is equal to integral e complement intersection f sorry e intersection f complement because you are removing e intersection f so e intersection f complement of f d mu plus nu of e intersection f but f belongs to k so that is less than or equal to nu 
of E intersection F plus nu of E intersection F. Uh, this complement intersection F which is equal to nu E. So this implies that H is also in K. But so, so why are we doing this? Assume nu naught is not identically zero. Then only you can do that uh, this uh, eta and f because we needed that the measure should not be identically zero. But integral h d mu over x is equal to integral over x f d mu plus eta times mu f which is strictly bigger than alpha because this is strictly positive and this is equal to alpha and that is a contradiction because h is in k and alpha is the supremum of all those integrals. Therefore, this implies that nu naught is identically 0 and that implies that nu equal to nu 1 uh, and therefore nu of e equals integral f d mu over e for all e in this. Okay? And that completes the proof of the Radon negative theorem. So, as I said earlier, we will also have to, we will now generalize this to other cases, namely when finally when mu and nu are both sigma finite sign measures. Okay, so that is the most general form. So, right now we have proved the theorem for every finite pair of finite measures, which one which is absolutely continuous with respect to the others.